Please stand for the reading of the word. Uh, this morning's scripture uh, focus is Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. A vision of a man from Macedonia came to Paul during the night. He, stir he stood urging Paul, come over to Macedonia and help us. Immediately after he saw the vision, we prepared to leave for the province of Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We sailed from Tros, Tros straight from Samutrace, and came to Neapolis the following day. From there we went to Philippi, a city of Macedonia's first district, in a Roman colony. We stayed in that city several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the riverbank, where we thought there might be a place for prayer. We sat down and began to talk with the women who had gathered. One of those women was Lydia, a Gentile God worshiper from the city of Thaoutira, a dealer in purple cloth. As she listened, the Lord enabled her to embrace Paul's message. Once she and her household were baptized, she urged, now that you have decided that I am a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my house. And she persuaded us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Glory, thank you for this beautiful day you blessed us with. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here together, exalting your holy name. Lord, I pray that you will give me strength. So I ask for the Holy Spirit to come and to guide my words and to guide our thoughts. Lord God, we ask you to open up our hearts and minds so we may receive from you today. And that we as a church, as a body, will be encouraged by the fact that through your son Jesus Christ we have a mission. And that mission is to go out into the world, into our communities, and share the love of your son Jesus Christ with all. And I ask these things now in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Well, pretty much... In a nutshell, this text reveals to us insights as to how time-consuming and laborious it is to be on an important assignment for the sake of carrying the good news of Jesus into the world. In addition to that, we also read how fulfilling it truly can be when missional attempts and goals are actually achieved. So I want us just real quickly to pay close attention to this text because it's critical for us as the body of Christ to embrace the task that Jesus Christ left the church which is simply to go and tell and to go and share the love of Christ into the world. So as we as a church continue to reason what it means to mission the community, to be a blessing to the community, let's take this in consideration. Number one, do not get tired in doing good. In our text, Paul and his team were trying to do good, but later on it was determined that God wanted them to go somewhere else. You see, this mission team were, was heading to the east, but God revealed to Paul that they needed to go to the west. And the scripture says 
that the Spirit of the Lord forbid them to go to the east. Isn't that? Now, we don't know why and how, basically, the Lord kept them from going to the east. But perhaps things just didn't work out for them. Maybe the weather was bad. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have sufficient equipment or efficient funds to travel. Nonetheless, we learn from time to time when we're on the mission field and what the people of God learned here, that God's leading and directing involved their not, them not going the way they expected to go. But even though the team faced adversity, they still were determined to do good, and we find out in time, guess what happened? They saw the fruit of their labor. I'm simply here to encourage the church today, here at Trinity, this morning, by encouraging you, by saying simply, do not get tired in doing good. Because in time, we will see the fruit of our labor. Secondly, as we consider missioning our community, as we consider getting together and asking ourselves what can we do and how can we do missions in our community, do you realize that one idea can be a blessing to many? Paul was given an idea. He was given insight from God on what to do next. And I love what this passage reveals to us. When the team heard about the new approach, they did not grumble and complain and said, been there, done that, we've already tried that three pastors ago. <laughs> no, it says immediately, they gave it another shot. You see, their failed attempts in missions did not prevent them from trying a new approach. But what was their secret, you may be asking? You see, this group of people were actually convinced that God had called them to be carriers and proclaimers of the good news. That alone ought to give us the motivation, church. As to when we hear of an idea of how we may be able to reach lives, we should say, let's give it a try. One idea can cause many to be blessed. Just ask the late Colonel Sanders, amen? One recipe of 11 herbs and spices, amen? has forever changed the way we eat fried chicken, amen? And what we expect from fried chicken. Come on, you all know all about it. Just think about the simple act of popcorn, amen? I don't know where that idea came from. But last year, I remember going popping for Jesus at Mountain Empire Community College. I went with Betty Fleener and the crew, and Elvis was there, there too. Elvis was there, Fred. And I just joined the team and simply went to Mountain Empire and popped popcorn and gave oatmeal cakes to staff. There weren't many students there because of COVID. But nonetheless, I experienced the joy. I saw hope in the lives of the staff members that came from a simple concept being applied, amen? Lastly, as we consi consider what we need to do 
and how we can go into the community and be Jesus to people. We've got to get it in our minds and our hearts that responding to the call to do good within our communities is never of little value or importance. Paul and his team, as well as Lydia and the women's blessings, were depending on the missions team willingness to be open to God's promptings to go. Church, I know that God has prompted us through the years and I trust and believe that he will continue to prompt us. Amen. You know why I can say that? Because we're the church of the living God and Jesus has given us an assignment to go and be a blessing. And I know that God will continue to give us promptings. As we experienced yesterday, it could be as simple, simple as going across the street to Miners Park during the recovery fest, handing out water and having literature there to help people get closer to Jesus. It could be simply through the preparing of school kits, amen? And blessing them and sending them to Zimbabwe to children in need. It could be as simple as putting a food box together, amen? With a sign on it that says, pick up and take what you need and place other items to share with. It could simply be just putting our loose change in a bucket to support children's missions in the conference. We have so many opportunities, and I wish I could tell you exactly what would, 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 would yield the blessings of God. I don't know which mission we will do will bring that big harvest, but I don't know about you, uh, but it should be of our interest that we do as much good as we possibly can. Because it's simple. Lives are dependent on it. And personally speaking, I don't know what your next move in your faith journey is, but perhaps today is the day for you to surrender to the Lord. Oh, I love this hymn here. I'm gonna try to do it justice. Um, if I was smart, I just would have read, the, I just would have sang this hymn and dismissed you because it tells you all about what I'm talking about today. It simply goes, I can hear my Savior calling I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. We'll go with him, with him, all the way. Let us respond to what we have heard and what we have seen. We ask that you grab a hymnal and turn to 889 for our affirmation. We ask you to stand. Thank you. There is one God and there is one mediator 
Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. They say and is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen.